News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk, KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. The legislature gets down to business today after the swearing-in ceremonies yesterday. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. And if you haven't had a chance to say this to you yet, Happy New Year, everyone. And our newscast this morning is sponsored by Western States Cat, located on Reserve, with things you'll need all winter on sale, like deals on batteries and antifreeze. The 90-day session of the Montana Legislature is officially underway. The spouses and kids of lawmakers filled the House chamber yesterday. Supreme Court Justice Jim Rice swore in the 100 representatives. In the Senate chamber, Justice Lori McKinnon administered the oath of office. Secretary of State Corey Stapleton told lawmakers they have been elected to serve in Montana's House of Conflict. He says the conflict over the session's next few months will affect the lives of Montanans who live under the laws they pass. Stapleton says the legislature, uh, legislators can choose how they conduct themselves in conflict and urge them to show their humanity. Speaking of which, state legislators didn't get much of a break before they started the session with the official swearing-in ceremony yesterday in the Capitol Rotunda. Uh, House District 94 Democrat Kimberly Dudick is a Missoula attorney. She comes into the session with a defined list of priorities, one of which to provide funding for infrastructure in addition to fully funding universal pre-K education. Specifically, there is one way of funding physical infrastructure called bonding, and that would be similar to how you finance a house when you buy it. You don't pay cash outright for everything typically you get a mortgage of some sort and then you pay on that over time and right now is a very good time to do some sort of bonding for our state and if we did that as well as invested in universal pre-kindergarten education we can do both Dudek also has ideas to boost the state's economy through specific tax breaks one would allow businesses to take a tax deduction if they help pay back student loans of their employees and I also have a bill. It would be a voluntary program where businesses could take a tax deduction if they set up a voluntary family medical leave account for their employees. Republicans hold strong majorities in both the state house and the Senate. The session will last 90 days. Methamphetamine and heroin have helped to fuel much of the violent crime in Missoula in 2016, according to County Attorney Kirsten Pabst with a look at the numbers. Last year we filed felony charges in 93 methamphetamine cases. That is, that's huge. Um, but not far behind, it is 24 cases that we filed regarding felony um, heroin or opiate possession. Pab said her office has had to deal with drug-related violent crime almost on a daily basis. Every other day in Missoula County, someone in our community is the victim of a violent offense. That's pretty significant. And this is the thing that was really startling to me is that 60% of the violent crimes processed by our office arise in the context of a domestic violence or family violence situation. Pap said she'll have the full official year-end report ready for release later this month. She's committed to continuing her weekly visits every Friday on TalkBack through 2017. Two men are in custody after a cabin burglary near Wolf Creek was interrupted by the owners, which resulted in shots being fired by the suspects and the homeowners. 23-year-old Caleb Daniels has been charged with attempted deliberate homicide, while his companion, 26-year-old Jory Strizich, was shot in the leg by the homeowner. He's currently being treated at a Helena hospital. Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton said the incident occurred late last week. Uh, suspects came out. There was a skirmish that involved two suspects and the homeowners. Shots were fired. And one of the suspects was wounded, and they took off. One suspect caught a ride into the town of Wolf Creek. The other suspect took off into the snow and in, into the wintry weather. Dutton gave kudos to the media for accurately broadcasting the description of the suspects. Around 5 o'clock that evening, a resident or a citizen in Wolf Creek, Montana, who had seen the description on the news, recognized the individual outside his door and called in. The suspect was shortly apprehended after a brief foot pursuit. The other suspect, the wounded man Strizich, was apprehended with help from the canine unit after following his blood trail in the snow. Both men are in custody in the Lewis and Clark County Jail. Montana does not store emails in state archives, despite state laws that require emails of importance to be preserved. The Missoulian newspaper reports the state archives are supposed to be a storing place for the important records about the government, but no emails are being kept. 
Officials say the problem is two-pronged. Agencies delete emails too soon, and the archives don't have the equipment to accept digital records. As a result, Montana residents have lost decades of public information. The state archive issue comes after deleted emails made headlines across the country this election season. In Montana, Republicans criticized the fact that no emails existed from Democrat Governor Steve Bullock's term as Attorney General. 2016 has passed now. Hunters in Montana hoping that 2017 will bring a more successful big game season. Fish, Wildlife and Parks Administrator Ron Osheim says last season was somewhat unprecedented. The day it's over, we get hit with this unbelievably strong blast of winter weather. But certainly deer and elk harvest was down somewhat. The good news is uh, those populations are still in good shape. Certainly deer are coming back, antelope are coming back in the east following that uh, bout they had with the disease and that winter we had here four or five years ago. According to Osheim, weather can help move elk into places where they're more available to hunters. We're still way over objective with elk in Montana. We have shoulder seasons ongoing now in over 40 hunting districts, and some of them will open at the the start of uh, January. Obviously, opportunities with this snow and cold are going to be better. Haven't heard a lot, but uh, gosh, in some cases you can hunt those elk until the middle of February. So the idea is to harvest some cow elk to get population numbers down. Oshheim says about 150 wolves have been taken so far, but the population is still healthy. FWP will know final numbers in the next couple of months. And finally, Montana Governor Steve Bullock has signed an emergency order suspending rules that restrict working hours for truckers carrying heating fuel. The executive order signed last week cites harsh winter conditions and the difficulty in delivering fuel to homes. Truck drivers aren't allowed to work too many hours in a row and must rest a certain amount of time between shifts. Bullock's order lifts those restrictions for truckers hauling propane, heating oil, and diesel fuel until the end of this month. Our news talk time is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Partly sunny and cold today with our high temperatures in the single digits. A windchill advisory has been issued for windchill readings some 15 to 30 degrees below zero. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.